Okay. Um, moving on to the last the cleanups. It, it, people are going to tell me that 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 users that users are just so dumb and simplistic that that's the reason why iOS sells. Bullshit. Make the operation come to the operating system, not the other way around. Shit. If my four year old can do it, anybody else can do it. Intuitive and easy to use is relative to the user and their willingness to learn. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what, honestly, you know, just like I, what you just said your kid's doing to watch the Green Lantern and stuff, you know, it's not a simple thing. It's complex. He wants to know how to watch Green Lantern. He doesn't really care what he has to do. He'll push as many buttons and things and everything else as he has to. And at the end of the day, that is the average user. I don't care what hurdles i got to jump over. Just tell me what they are. <laughs> exactly. Just tell me what to do. Yep, tell me what to do. Okay. I mean, really, if you get an average user going and they really want to do what they're trying to do, they look like an octopus. They don't care. They don't care at all. They just go click, click, click. Yeah, exactly, but they don't want to be told that they can't. You know, it's like, it's like the, the people that would rather drive an extra 10 miles to avoid traffic to get home than sit through traffic. They'll do it. They'll... They'll go over the hurdle. Yeah, they'll, they'll drive an extra... I, I, I've noticed this. People will drive not only extra miles, but uh, upwards of an extra hour just so long as they have flow. Like, they will not sit there for 20 right. minutes of congestion, but they'll drive out of their way for an hour as long as they can keep going 40 to 60. I mean, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and what our mantra, what we're getting at is that bring people to... the technology. Don't, bring, don't dumb the technology down to the path of literature. Okay, and on that note, we're going to leave that off and move into the rest remaining topics and clean up stuff. Why is Walmart losing sales? Really? Just give me one second. I'm going to get a beer. A uh, beer. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to do a drunk um, uh, bit now. <laughs> no, he's not drinking rum. <laughs> you, you know what? Y'all should come for the cracker cast. That's <laughs> just or a bottle of tequila. I have a feeling. I don't know. I have a feeling the blood, the blood alcohol level will get high during that show. <laughs> I was kidding. You, you know, Bob, the moxie evaporated. Did it? I mean, like when I when I we went on a family trip. In yeah. December to, to Central Texas, and that was a surprise also for my parents, and because uh, they're all from New England and they they love Moxie too. And when I when I just pulled that out of like the case, you should have seen their faces. They're just like, "What the hell? How did you get that?" Awesome. He knows the guy. <laughs> yeah, it was such a it was, it was such a big hit. <laughs> Somebody you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know a guy that I, I know a guy that knows another guy that introduced yeah. me to a guy and <laughs> it's my it's my internet friend in Portland, Maine, don't you know? He <laughs> sent me some soda. Soda. <laughs> it's wicked good, huh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, just make sure you don't add any R's to anything. Okay, uh, two things, oh, let's see, do, oh, do we even care that people spend three minutes on Google Plus versus seven hours on this Facebook? Is this just accurate, though? Actually, I, 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 this is on average, and on average, I'd believe it, because, uh, no, here's the thing. Google shot themselves in the foot on that metric when they started making it mandatory sign up for G+. Because think of all these zeros cutting the average down. Are, are these like... Okay. Because every time you sign up for a Google thing now, you automatically get a Google+. Plus. And if you don't want Google+, Plus, it's an inactive Google+, Plus that's dragging the whole average down of Google+, Plus usage. Whereas everybody who's on Facebook wanted a Facebook. I think that this maybe should be rewritten, though, and say 90 million users um, doing not very much. I, 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 I want to add a caveat to that, because to me, Facebook is the epitome of nothing. And <laughs> not, not doing very much. So is, is it that Google Plus is actually more productive and actually getting people to contact? And is it, is it because its UI is a bit better for people just to quick, say a quick hello? 
and say, hey, here's maybe this and that, and we're done, and not playing Farmville and trading Easter eggs and, 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 and giving someone cows on the other end or, or, or killing some fictitious mafia game. Uh, you know what? We already have all of those on Google+. Plus. Is there already on Google? All that shit? Go, go in the game. It's with, with the, uh, not the exact same games, although I'm sure Farmville's coming, but go in there. There's just as much fluffy gameness. Well, I'm just curious, though, but are the users using them? Uh, that here's the thing that honestly gets it in trouble, because everybody's afraid of the big bad Google and the privacy things. I guarantee you the users. <laughs> no, no, but think about it. I guarantee you the users that don't think twice about letting Facebook data harvest them. When you go into a Google game, you click in there, and there's this little thing. Do you agree to let Google and this developer data mine you? And it shows you the stuff they're going to sign. And I guarantee you, people who would never think about this go, oh, but it's Google. They already know too much about me already. Do I really want to even play this game? <laughs> okay, well, and, and this is from people who willingly post whatever to Facebook. I know. I didn't say it makes sense. I'm just <laughs> saying what the public whenever, perception whenever is. Like whenever you like something. Start over, Bob. And it's like with Facebook, you like something, they're data mining you, and so they can serve you ads. It's and Facebook's not data mining you. No, that's no, they are. That, that's, that's the thing. It's just for some reason people turn a blind eye to it with Facebook until it bites them in the ass. But when it comes to Google data mining them, this is the big bad Google. Do I really want the big bad Google to data mine me? They have. <laughs> well, it's just that I, the Google biggest mistake was that they were requiring everybody to use their real names over their uh, fake names. They've yeah. since backed off of that. Yeah, yeah. But they, they did it when I was on. I mean, I don't care. Everybody already knows who the hell I am anyway. But uh, Well, and I, then you have people like me and Kami who in part of that fallacy said, screw you, Google. You're not getting my real name. <laughs> they, were, they weren't the only ones that felt. Remember Blizzard uh, tried that too? Uh, real ID. You, you remember how the Blizzard users responded to that? They posted yeah. like the CEO and higher ups in, in Blizzard. You know, they basically just said, "Oh, so we have nothing to." Okay, here's yeah. y'all's shit, and they just. <laughs> and then, he essentially, is saying, "I don't want to have to behave on the internet like I do in real life." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Yeah, they were gonna make it where. Your real names were on the Blizzard forums. Uh-huh. Uh, and, 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 and the people on the forums' response to that was they basically went and got the... They, they got all the information from the higher-ups on Blizzard and basically set, uh, put that information on the forums. And, oh, what happened to those higher-ups' houses and other shit? And it's just, they're like, okay, maybe we're wrong! <laughs> That it, we have a user behavior. I mean, you'd probably be hard pressed today to find um, our generation, or maybe a generation above my, 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 myself, that would even participate in like rotary clubs. Uh, and, and probably be like, what the hell was that? I mean, that was the old way. You'd have a lot of um, socialization that went on. Today, in my own street, shoot, I've got a neighbor that cannot get in their garage fast enough. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, it, what, sometimes the rear tires haven't cleared the sensors on the ground, so the garage door that's coming down goes back up when the tires hit. But I mean, that's, I, it, you, I guarantee you they probably get on the computer and they have their shit all over the place and they feel... Yeah. Like, I, I know what you're talking about, and I can't stand that gonna, shit. This is one of the reasons I. This is one of the reasons among many I don't own a house. Aside from the fact I haven't been able to figure out where I actually want to own a house, but I honestly want to live in a neighborhood where people actually talk to each other, and and don't. <laughs> it's like, like cause I, I, that's how I grew up. I, 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 I grew up where, for the most part, you know, we knew at least the neighbors on both sides or three sides, and we, you know, we hung out with them. We were trying. That's how I grew up, and I moved all over the country, but we did that. And it's like people don't do that at all anymore. They don't. They, they probably couldn't even tell you their neighbor's name unless they get their mail occasionally. Right, but I think Facebook is is the, is the epitome of, of 
being able to act out something that you would never even come close to doing if, if you were in real life. And I think that people just want to retreat um, from their real lives and be able to and be able to participate on something that, that they feel comfortable behind the, the, the uh, curtain, uh, so to speak, and, and able to be other things. I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of that movie Sarah gets a little bit, you know? I mean, that was like taking it way to an extreme, but it, wouldn't it be true if we had the ability to that? But it, it, it was, it was Bruce Willis said, he says, how do I know it's not some fat guy, you know, uh, jacking off or something? <laughs> Uh, and well, that, that, you know, they actually went there in Gamer. Oh, did they really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too bad Gamer sucked. But, yeah. Game, the premise was interesting, but the movie sucked. <laughs> but, but, I mean, they're hitting on a principle that essentially is happening now. People seem to be secure and love to make internet friends, but, are, but if we were to actually go to their real life, it, it would be an extremely different story. Well, and see, that's the I thing. Get, a lot of me. The you know, I get to know. I've I've met um, four of the people that that, that I that, that and it's you know within reason. Obviously, the internet builds friendships that are that can span great distances. But I guarantee you, I'll I'll make a play to go visit Bob the next time I'm up, I'm up in Maine. <laughs> um, but you know, the thing of it is, is that it, there are many people that would never even consider that. No, and, and, and see, it really comes down to the personality types. I think all of us, we're large. I, I mean, I'm making a, one hell of an assumption here, but I'm making the assumption we're largely the same people we are online in real life. You know, because we're, we're the we're the same person to a stranger as as friends. You're talking we're, about us. Yeah. Yeah, but that, most people that isn't the case. They create this alternate persona. It's on everything else, and it's. It's just it's an entirely different person. You honestly don't have a clue who they actually are. Right. I mean, and you know, the far, the, the the longest distance friend that I've made that I personally met uh, lives in New Zealand, right. and they came and they came to the states because um, their uh, girlfriend uh, was a bridesmaid to uh, her friend that wanted to have a wedding in Las Vegas. So I flew to nice. Las Vegas, and we hung out for several days out there. It was a blast. I can only imagine a Vegas bachelor party with a New Zealander. <laughs> well, it was, it was on the girl's side. I mean, he was my friend who was, whose girlfriend was the bridesmaid. So oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't, yeah. Okay. Gareth. Yeah, you know Gareth, exactly. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, I mean, obviously, Google's do, uh, dominating. I, I, I do know. Do you know? I know seven couples that I could name that have act, that are actually married, have kids, and strong relationships based upon internet dating. You know, they it, it, you know what? It, it, people poo poo it. It 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 used properly. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, but no, people who are using it because they can't talk yeah. to somebody in real life. It, it, but what does that thing do? It forces you to be who you really are, or you're going to get called on it, essentially. And and but that's the real power of the internet. If you are who you really are online, then the internet really becomes an outreach for you. It's an easy it's an easier way to have a larger pool of people to make genuine friends with. Yeah. Versus pretending to be something you're not. And I think dating sites obviously makes. The pond you're fishing in much larger than even more fish, and if you are going to be, I, I, I have mixed feelings about the true benefit of that, though, in the in the dating thing. I mean, where there are people who will just pick up and move cross country, cross continent, cross the world. Happens, man. It's, I'm telling you, it happens. I know, like, I know it happens. I mean, it's just, I mean, there's people who meet their soulmate in a game, and uh, uh, God, you just see some really weird. Ways well, people hook sure up. I'm like some weird things. What is ironic, though, of all say no, that whether they came from their their a significant other came from North Carolina, Oregon, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Arizona, they all moved to Texas. And it was interesting that I think that it was that the jobs were here, and I think that's probably why they moved to Texas versus my Texas country. is very company friendly. It is one of the, you know, I, 
I'm did, not gonna get into politics. I was just saying. No, no, no. I'm just referring to the fact it's the of it, it. It it takes you literally 20 minutes to form a business in Texas. It, it, it's that little red tape. It's just, is the name being used by somebody else? Pay the administrative fee. You're in business. Go go be business. Go do things. That is how friendly that is. And that's why there's that thing. There is no red tape between anybody. Well, who, I, uh, I only made that comment because you said you were surprised that, you know, you had made a comment about of how far people will travel. No, I'm not, no, no. It, 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 but I'm saying everybody isn't in the position to travel. I mean, I could meet a chick right now who's in Seattle, and uh, I am not. There, or would you stay in Florida? Say what? Do you move up there, or would you stay in Florida? Well, it depends on what's going on. But I'm not necessarily in the position to just do that right now. Man, you know, I drove. I drove up in the Northwest when I was back in the Marine Corps. It was only one road trip. It's a gorgeous country up there. I never made it as far as Washington, but I went up into Oregon. It was it's just beautiful up there. Oregon's very uh, when you start getting out towards the Seattle oh, Oregon's great. When you start getting Oregon and northern Montana there, uh, and, and so on, when you start getting out towards the Seattle area, until you get to Seattle it's it where there's actually more mountainous stuff. It's it, yeah, it's kind of a an in but in between stuff. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Because I listen, and Bob, I mean, do you think that, that, that this is the, the, the power that most people like about the internet, hiding behind the veil of anonymity, or, or what? I know. <laughs> I have nothing. I was huh? say, I was waiting for, uh, for me, I am who I am, and if, you know, what, what I project on the internet is who I am in real life, and if people don't like it, too damn bad. A, a Bob <laughs> by any other name is just as Bobbish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but I mean, not for you. I, you don't have to tell us your story. Well, 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 the, well a majority. That, that's my take on it. Be who yeah. you are. In, life, in real life, on the bad, be who you are. And if you can't do that, then you have your own insecurity problems that you need to fix. So, but do you think that Facebook is more successful because of the the, 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 the curtain versus yeah, when I, Plus started? I think Facebook's successful because people still have this idea of uh, when you used to sign up to communicate with like on uh, BBSs and you know bulletin boards and all that stuff, and you had pseudonyms. Sure. It, it became a disconnect that you didn't have to act as civil on the net as you do in real life. And it's a carryover, I think, unfortunately. And people don't realize that, hey, Facebook's data mining you and all this crap that you post is... Yeah, as evident by the people who make threats against people and wind up being investigated by government organizations. Exactly. <laughs> I, I refuse to go on. I mean, I think I made a joke that once we get the show bigger, one of us will have to go on Facebook, man, but... If we if we want to promote it socially, one of us is gonna have to. I'm already on it, so neither of you would have to go on. It. Okay, you officially are hired as our Facebook liaison. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yes, I did, but what about you? Well, you know, I keep my uh, real identity private. I know you do, and I'm yeah, we we know. We're not talking about that, and I, because I believe if I met you in real life, you'd have the same. Everything would be the same. That's not what we're, about talking about. we're not talking about privacy. We're talking about behavior. Well, if you want to talk about bizarre behavior where people really went way out there, <laughs> uh, what was the name of that game where you could simulate, simulate uh, Second Life or something? Uh, yeah, it was originally there, then it became Second Life, yeah. Yeah, there's some people who have really gone into the bizarre on that one. What are you Second Life? Is that a real game? It, yeah, it basically it's Second it's life. the Sims except it's like an MMORPG that's sim like. You can basically it's a virtual world, you can do whatever you want. What was the strangest thing I heard oh, of like and most of the currency is real cash, by the way. Yeah, you can you got a movie that looked like this. What, what was the movie where people were interacting with each other like this? In three D. I'm looking at Second Life's website now. 
there've been a th 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 there's life. been a couple. Yes, uh, Second Life is supposed to be like the uh, Facebook of video games mm. because it's just basically socializing, but with uh, sprouts. Wow. Uh, and, and you know, people end up dating in Second Life, and then there have been court hearings in real life over land in Second Life. Wait, 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 wait. They they utilize real court systems, or this is a virtual? No, no, it, it's the Second Life court system. Wait a minute, how do you do this? No, 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 there was a real trial. One guy shoot another guy because he uh, bought land off of him. And, uh... Well, yes, if real money is used. If real money is used. Oh, yeah, you're talking about, like, people using it to commit. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. And, and yes, if real, if real money is used, then it can hit her. Definitely, it's legitimate. That's interesting. Probably the wow. strangest one I ever saw was um, when the S and M people started getting in Second Life, and no, yeah, yeah, they were just enacting all their fantasies, and they couldn't do it. You had, you got it, got bad, and it was like I, they were like getting on it for. You know, violating all the sex laws and shit, and then they realized the people they were getting after were like consenting sixty-year-old geezers or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so wow, this is amazing. Oh yeah, like I said, Second Life is where they really went to the bizarre. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I know of, this was back in the day. Um, was, uh, and I don't think it was quite like that, but it was uh, called Leisure Larry. Oh, <laughs> Leisure Larry. Yeah. I, I played that once a long time ago. Well, now you we know? have uh, Bioware in their uh, Mass Effect and uh, Dragon Age games mm. with all lesbians and uh, threesomes. Wow. How could that possibly be enjoyable? You know, it's just like with the MMORPGs when it's a, a dirty, a dirty old man showed me this the other day. Cause like the two people who play video, the two main groups that play video dirty games are the kids and the old farts who have decided they don't give a shit. And uh, th th this was wrong. Well, you know, an old fart was just, it was the office joke going around. They're like, you want to see something really screwed up? They're showing the, the sprite. It's like, we're just going to leave her here. And then she starts flirting with you. It's like, but, but why? Right. <laughs> it, it's pixels on a screen. Why? <laughs> All right, so we do that on the okay Google Unified Privacy Settings unsettle users. Now, I, I actually followed a, an article that it was talking about getting rid of your web history, and I followed it, but. When I when I did it, Google didn't have any web history for me. It basically said turn web history on. So I was like, no, I don't want to turn it on. I mean, uh, are you telling me people actually went into their settings and said, I want to have web history saved by Google for them to like have it removed? I remember Google admitting, uh, admitting that they do keep records of every search you do, but by but uh, but by law they have to. Oh, that's a it. that's a U.S. law. That's a US yeah. Law. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's a search engine thing that everybody has to bing. Everybody has to do a thirty day. I'm talking about this is like a web history. I followed this article. Um, if you have opted into certain Google services. You because will. It was like turn it on. I was like, not on. No, no. Certain Google services, you will get opt in to that, and they will start doing that. And, and that's the concern over the privacy uh, merger. Some Google services, things like that, were enabled by default, while as others, they're disabled by default. And people are like, oh, wait a minute, are you going to turn it on everywhere? Are you going to turn it off everywhere? Are you going to, like, what's going to, that's where the panic's coming from. Google should have done this, I guess, a long time ago. Rather than well, this is the aftermath of the fact that Google has spent years gobbling up companies. You know, they bought right. YouTube, they bought Blogger, they bought, they bought all these companies, all of which were pre-existing with their own terms of service. Right. I mean, sure. How did Google do all that for Advertising revenue. Yeah, they make 
billions in their well, ads. You know they own the two main uh, advertisement apps within I iOS. Yes. Yeah, that's and that that's another yeah, example of their acquisitions. Well, honestly, I think that's one of the smartest things Google did with their money. You know, the, the, the internet boom, the, in the last great search boom, Google got billions, and instead of just sit high on their morals and wither it away, they used that money to start buying other companies and things. And yeah. Well, they advertising. created uh, yeah, Google Ads, and Apple created iAds, which failed, and Microsoft has Microsoft Ads. What really is your Microsoft Ads? It's not, uh, it's not quite what it... it it's got some power to it because of the Xbox, but... Yeah, it... it yeah, you know, Apple, you can say all they want about the, the billions that Apple made, uh, part of which is... is they can thank for the cell carriers, but it's it is impressive that Google has amassed a quite significant fortune just based on advertising, largely on advertising. You know what's hysterical about that is they basically stole that advertising model. I I forget who what was the search engine when Google originally came out. You know they they had that that same page they have now. You know just the white screen with the search bar. And they were desperately trying to figure out how to make money. And they couldn't figure it out. They, they were the, very... I think they stole the from Lycos. Wasn't it Lycos? Was it Lycos? Lycos? Yeah, basically what they did was they said, Ooh, that model will work for us. We can sell those types of ads. So they, if, if, if it's Lycos, they went to them. They wanted to merge with them. And... The Google, I, I was a Google user. I'm talking early on when it was at university... Level experiment. That's yeah. how early I was. <laughs> Guy, you've been using them since almost the beginning, then. <laughs> yeah, because you had to like sign up from a friend, and, we, and it was like it was just interesting behavior because back then we were all into how do we push how do we push people about the search engines. Well, and, and you're the people that got them kicked out of university. Because y'all were using too much of the university servers. <laughs> so they had to go find venture capitalists to even s keep existing. Yeah. But no, it, it's funny how they got that. that like, they, they went to them, they wanted to buy or merge with them or work out a licensing agreement. I don't know if they wanted them. Because no, they did. They were, they, 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 they were in negotiations and they were trying to merge with them and basically... Uh, if, if it was Lie or whoever, I, I can't remember what the company is, but the company basically told Google to fuck off. So Google just recreated it. And then they sued them, but it was... <laughs> yeah, because they, they, their search sucked, but the, the ad revenue model was good. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those Lactos commercials with the dog park. <laughs> Which That's one? How much money they're getting now. Uh, which, 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 which one? They have a complex, man. Yeah. I, I was actually intrigued. I, I was. I, I admit, I was a big proponent of Google when it was first launching. I, I really appreciated the tech because it was a tech. It was technologically moving us forward. Mm -hmm. and that's. I always jump on things that I find that move us forward in technology. I and still laugh at the fact that they were able to find venture capitalists because. When Google was, even though Google was one hell of an innovation in search, it was in the, it, they, were, they were the last one. It was on the tails ends of, we don't need another search engine. I don't care how good it is. Well, yeah, and Yahoo was probably, was at one time, they, they were competing with, you know, Lycos, and I thought Yahoo was, was, king, was king for a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And Google just came in there and started taking over services and introducing new services that were unheard of as part of search engine uh, services and built this empire largely on average. They, they, they got the business model that appears to the freeloaders. The, the idea that give it away, you know, the, the idea of bait. 
give it away and just make money off of them. Yeah. Don't make money from them, make it off of them. Right. It, right. You know, and that's largely why I don't really participate on much of Google services. A lot of my media still comes from the iTunes side or Amazon side because I am a, the type of person that says I would rather pay for my own channels without commercials and I don't, I'll fork out the money to do it. You know, I don't want to deal with it. The only, the only thing that is a, pisses me off today is that while we have DRM-free music, we can't seem to break the movie industry in getting DRM-free movies. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, but on, uh, here, uh, and you know what? I here's the thing. I'm willing to pay as yeah. long as I get, as long as I actually own it and get all the the freedom to do whatever the hell I want with it. But I'm not necessarily opposed to the trade either, as long as the terms are transparent. I I, I don't, you know, it's like you don't have to worry about the terms of the iTunes DR on music, dude. I, I purchased everything. Through iTunes or Amazon, Amazon. Well, you can use Automator. Can well, as that. long as part of the terms of the iTunes marketplace or I can't use my favorite platform, I have no interest in it. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, because see, for me, OS ten automatically converts. Well, well, the what do you mean? Feeds, Go ahead, well, I was just saying, like, if I buy music and it comes in with a little uh, M four or whatever bullshit it is. Uh, it immediately gets converted to MP3 and pushed to my network drive, which then Windows sees and everybody else sees. And but but bet I have to have an OS 10 or Windows machine, and there are times when I don't, and they refuse to make their service work with Linux, and they oh, refuse okay. to allow the hooks for access. And if it, if you can, it, you can put Amazon on Linux. Right, you go to the website and it'll download, right? Uh, well, and Amazon was smart. They made their marketplace where other things can hook into it. So I have a lot of applications here that just hook into Amazon I'm, I'm seamless. Say, just hook into Banshee or something, and you can hook yeah. right into the, the marketplace. Well, technically, Amazon's a web page and not a program. So. <laughs> well, no, I, I, but see, that, that's the thing. But and I, and I, iTunes I, is, I mean, I want to say that with a comment. iTunes is also largely a web page, but a very controlled one. That's the thing. You have to go through the iTunes gatekeeper to get access to it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You know, maybe you can call me weird. I, I, I'm just stuck on... I hate the iTunes interface, but yet I find myself... Using it. Using it. Using it. <laughs> because Windows Marketplace on the Zoom shit, I hate that in there. A little fucking pass of fourteen ninety nine. And you read the fine print, and it's like, yeah, if you decide to cancel this, you only really get to keep this much. You know, I'm not interested in that. I want to buy... The movie, well, the movies is, is fine, but the music, they they would you know take it back if you ended the subscription. I'm not interested, and then I don't want to convert my dollars into Microsoft dollars. Okay, I'm sorry, cash is cash to me. You know, a freaking dollar is that. I don't need to have little Microsoft come in and say, well, we're going to turn it into our little monopoly money. But yeah, you know, that's the thing. I you, you know that that's about. not just Microsoft. That's dozens of sites online. I mean, pretty much any site that's doing. I've been looking I at. I guess I'm not visiting them because I, Microsoft to me is like the first to do that. Oh, oh no, no. Uh, I, I I've been looking at maybe. Actually, I know where they got it from. Where's that? Uh, Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo right. had that kind of point system. They still do even today. But wow. they they import. Uh, uh, the other thing is bit that that has become a uh, 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 why Mike I'm not sure Microsoft could get away with this without getting attacked by the courts but a number of companies have done this where they create their little like you say monopoly money and if at any point they need to change their profit margins they just change the conversion rates yeah let me ask this question because I probably my guess is a lot of this has to do with avoiding credit card service fees for a small purchase, right? Well, it, what it has to do, exactly, basically you buy, uh, that's exactly what it is. You buy their points and that transaction there and then the points are in your thing. Yeah, they don't, they don't pay as much in over. But see, Apple's making profit off of it. I mean, why can't they make, negotiate a better deal with their banks? Um, uh, actually, Apple's not making quite a profit. What Apple's doing is there they when you buy something on iTunes they mm -hmm. bill you if correct me if I'm wrong but don't they bill you at the end of the month no they don't I, I, I they don't charge know. each one individually yeah I do and they're not made they're hardly making any money because 
The, uh, who's making? Uh, I guarantee you, who's making more money on that is the credit card processing companies because they do. Well, do absolutely. The, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll segue this a little bit to let's take Walgreens. And those of you who don't even know who Walgreens is, uh, uh, I outside know, of that. I know who Walgreens is. Policy. Walgreens at one point it said they're no longer going to accept American Express because of American Express service fees, uh, and they and they actually came to negotiation um, where I believe that it was a, a compromise on probably both for uh, American Express maybe to come down and Walgreens to come up a little bit uh, for the transaction costs of, of doing because it's it people will, uh, I'm a big I like using plastic more than cash when you can. When a dollar, technically speaking, can be used, uh, it can be worth more to you in terms of airplane points. Because my wife uh, travels to Guatemala, my mother-in-law, and I can't tell you how many times she use points uh, to pay for stuff like that. So a dollar to me, in, in that aspect, is, is is worth a lot more as a consumer. But I, I know the vendors paying a lot of service fees also on their end to cover that cost if it's a small amount on a, on a transaction coming from a a credit card or something. Yeah. Even even debit cards. So. The debit card fees are less, but yeah. Oh, I know, but still. But no, yeah, you're right. It, it's really funny on. And this is why a lot of your like mom and pop convenience stores won't take credit cards for anything under X dollars because the reality is, uh, if you're below a certain dollar amount, I, and, and I and I've messed with this too up too much enough. I laugh when I go to the grocery store and buy something that's below the amount I know. I'm like, wait a minute, this costs them X, they're selling it to me for Y, and the merchant fee is Z. They just lost money. And I'm laughing my ass off at the fact I'm like, this is, <laughs> they thought like they can change shit. <laughs> so, Nintendo, Sega, Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis, but they aren't the only they, one, but they were one of the larger known ones who was doing that. Yeah, it basically, was just, it, it started out in the whole video game market. And now it's in all their phones and all their devices. Well, if Apple ever goes to something like that, then Amazon becomes my sole repository for media. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, I don't... I mean... My, well, my brother used to download music off of iTunes, but I never really downloaded music because I just use Pandora now. Really? I mean, I get, okay. I guess I. I mean, well, no, you know, like, honestly, right? but I'm get I'm getting more and more the same way. I I'm getting I, I I am gradually getting used to the idea of not owning my content and instead leasing access oh, for a God. evolving repository. You're like rubbing me the wrong way. I am ad adamant about property. I can't stand leases and rental. It's mine or it's not. And leave me the hell alone. I hate Wow, that's right. Well, I, I, I look at it in terms of bit. I look at it in terms of your favorite word, the opportunity cost. And the reality is, for a small nominal fee, I can lease far more than I could ever buy. And the reality is, the majority of this stuff doesn't have rewatchability. The few things I'm really, really, really diehard care about. Like, for example, I do own I do own Babylon Five. Mm -hmm. I I do own Firefly and Serenity. And there's a few things I'm like, no, nah, I kind of need to own those. But the vast majority, I'm like, you know what? It's not gonna kill me if they have licensing in her, yeah, and her, or so Wait, on. And, what happens if they change the licensing agreement? That, that's actually that. happened. I, I I I stuff goes on and off. Of I, my Netflix I, streaming all the time, and it yeah. and I don't panic. I, I kind of think of it like a Walkman, or you know, just like a radio. Yeah, it's like this is what's available to you today. That's, I, can, I can't, I can't, I cannot. My brain will never. I, I like the I, I listen to the radio to hear new material. That's what I expect the radio to provide to me is something new, like all right. Let me expand my album collection, but I will be damned. Oh my God, that frightens me, man. Because we are becoming so apathetic to what property is that well, shit. Let's just lease my clothes while we're at it. You know, it's like 
You know what? I'm sure we'll go there. And your wool surcharge for this month, sir, is... This man. And, and the companies... Are, no, and the companies exploit this shit. They exploit this. The, the cell phone market and the characters love this shit. Because essentially, people live and die on this, on this leasing thing. And people eat their damn... Yeah, I mean, it, it, especially Apple users. Well, oh, yeah. You pay a goddamn $189 fee and then pay another $199 fee to get the goddamn next iPhone to come up and shit. They're at like almost $400 fucking dollars to have a new gadget and the carriers are loving this shit. Oh yeah, my god. Man, it's like, we have, I don't know. I, man, I, I advocate for consumer knowledge on. Well, I, I advocate for consumer knowledge, and I was a big, I was on your camp for the longest time. I was like, leasing's bad. But here's the thing. We have honestly worked, we're, we're, we're getting the, the licensing worked out. We're getting the access worked out. And the reality is the internet's largely reliable. Their server's streaming it to you. The internet's viable, but, but the company Don't tell old Mr. Ben about on live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here's the thing. I lease things that have no value. For instance, I prefer if 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 you will, for instance, if you, if it is more advantageous to lease an automobile in more instances than own it. The depreciation value that you would lose in actually owning in that asset versus the service it provides, right? Uh, now that's not always the case. That's not always the case. But largely for most commuters it works out that something that if you look at as an investment that depreciates so rapidly it then makes more sense to actually own just like a, an equivalent to a timeshare of that value versus being the sole and losing all of that all of that investment in one go so rapidly as the way I would look at I look at leasing. I guess I'm looking at too much like an economist but yes I mean, you, you, you know what I, that's exactly what your problem is because you getting that concept is like an English teacher getting the concept of the word y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but you're a purist. You, 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 your problem is, and I never thought I would utter these words, but you're too educated that you can't get the obvious. Yeah, sometimes. My wife says it sometimes. It's like, <laughs> it's like this isn't about education or acquired knowledge. It's just common this, sense. This is a true story. Segment of this, if you want on the show, just just but true story. You know, here I here I am at the office in a programming, and, and we in our division uh, is like the, just the R and D for our company. And the, and sometimes we come out of our we call our cave and we go meet everybody else in the building. Well, it was like a birthday party, and they're all passing the cake. Anyway, every now and then people have fax, and so I go to this fax machine. And I don't know what the fuck, man. I put the damn thing in. I, 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 yes, it's face down, but I don't know how to send the goddamn thing. I put the number, and I was like, okay, what do I do now? You press the button. It's got these two fucking start buttons, and it's and I'm like, well, what the fuck? Which one do I push and shit like this? You know, and it's like one's black and one's green. One's so like, for color, you? one's for black. Yes, I did, to me, <laughs> I could have sat there for a fucking day and never put that shit out. I would have just ended up just getting frustrated and pushing either one or, or, or whatever. And I'm sitting here, and the, and the girls in accounting are just like laughing. And I, so I'm sitting here, I was like, what the fuck button? Do I, what is this, black and green? Why can't they just goddamn make one fucking button and start sending the damn thing? I don't need all these things right here. And, and uh, it's just a true story, you know, on something like that, I would just sit there, my brain will lock up, and, and that's it. We're not moving. I'm stuck looking at a black and a green button. <laughs> then it's over to simplify too much, though. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like iOS. Yeah. It's like, well, you don't, you know, everything must be one or the other. You don't need the option for, you know, because if you scan it in black, it's not going to be able to be readable, so it's got to be scanned in color. And it's. To me, a fax isn't that important to have shit in color. I mean, for crying, I've never seen a good quality fax in my life. No, but when you're sending certain documents like driver's licenses or things like that, you have to you you have to screw with the color settings to get it to come out as anything other than a black blob on the other side. I, I, I guess yeah. I guess my perception is if the, the more bells and whistles you whistles you add to a fax machine, you become gimmicks and wishful thinking. I guess that's how my brain you know my brain processes things like. 
Yes, well, it depends what you've been faxing. If you're primarily fox faxing like printed documents and spreadsheets, that's true. But if you've ever had to fax legal documents or verification documements, I you, have. I mean, I have, but I mean, they never demanded it my color. Oh god, I hate faxing things like driver's licenses and IDs, especially with all this anti-fraud stuff on them. Obviously, people need to fax the car because a goddamn green button exists on the thing. But uh, to me, it's just my brain, I guess, puts it as like, really? You want to add all these bells and whistles that, that are, you know, if it stinks like shit and it looks like shit, no matter how much perfume you put on it, it ain't going to change what it is. You know, it's what and it comes this to is fact. why he's in the Apple camp. Yeah. What's, what's that? <laughs> He said, this is why you're in the Apple camp. <laughs> I mean, think about it. That is the Apple philosophy for a moment. Oh, God. No, well, that's what iOS has become. You know, to me, it's like, well, you can, you can put the shit in a Ziploc bag and, and, and put that Ziploc bag in a nice cardboard box that, that's white and pure, but it's not going to change what's inside it. 